Man, I'm excited. I just did it. I finally figured out the proper way. There's been a whole lot of testing. But if you hear this bad boy little EcoFlow Duo right here, which represents about 7 kilowatts of power screaming. Screaming because it's plugged into the Tesla Model X. <laughs> Check this out. It's a great day to have a great day. Finally. I know a lot of people figure this stuff out quick. I just don't. It took me a whole lot of trial and error and prep and all kinds of stuff. But I am charging uh, my Tesla Model X Plaid right now off those two batteries and those solar panels. So true solar generator, man. If you're truly a country dude and you're truly a country boy and you truly live way out in the middle of nowhere, stop acting like your diesel truck is the get off, dodge, uh, bug out, live forever vehicle. It's not. Your big ass diesel is only going as far as that gas station and the second the grid goes down and the power goes off, that diesel truck is basically a dead weight. Don't forget that. It's real talk. Now, I can literally be anywhere now. I know you're all going to say, you know, let me, let me show you. Before you say Teslas are whatever, please remember, I love twin turbo V8s. I like vehicles sitting on 37 inch tires with 18 inches of ground clearance. This is also mine. So I'm not saying don't have you a badass four wheel drive vehicle. Have one. You should have one. What I'm talking about is when the grid truly goes down or there's an actual emergency, an actual weather emergency, something crazy actually happens, how are you going to drive? First off, you shouldn't be driving. You should be bugging in and staying in the house. However, if you have to, what are you going to do? In this case, you should always have a very reliable, very durable, phenomenal off-road electric vehicle in your motor pool at all times when the grid goes down. Now, why do I think Tesla is kind of the way to go? They just own the market, guys. There's not another electric vehicle out there that's better. There's just not hard stop, okay? The most reliable, the longest batteries, the best power ratio. I mean, it's all there. So, you know, is Rivian one to watch? Absolutely, man. Um, Cybertruck good? Absolutely. Is the, is the Lightning good? Absolutely. Anything is better than nothing. I would take a Nissan Leaf over not having an electrical vehicle at all because... Here we go. Oh, sorry. Tesla door just opens. What it does? Because right now, guys, picture this. Grid down. Everything's offline. As long as the sun's up, I'm making right now 800 watts of power, which is not a lot. I get it. Those solar generators from EcoFlow, EcoFlow Pro, are running off these solar panels. They're grounded. I'll go over that because that's what took me forever to figure out. They're grounded, and now they're delivering one kilowatt of power to the Tesla Model X. Let me show you in detail. All right, guys, this is really cool, man. Now, are we pulling a lot of power? Absolutely not. It would literally take forever for this car to have a full charge right now. But in the case of a real emergency, and again, I have this set to get us at 50%, so it's going to take me about nine hours to get 13% of energy. But 13% of energy is, you know, I get about three and a half miles on 1%. So 1% basically represents three and a half miles. So even on a 13% charge, I can go almost 40 miles. Now, if you're just going to be using your car in case of an emergency, which is all you should be doing in a grid down situation, if you're adding 40 miles approximately a day to your car just off the sun and you're only driving once or twice a week for an emergency, this is literally all you need. The other aspect of this with electric cars is, let's say you break down on the side of the road. Why, why can't you have one of these in a the car? Just throw it in. It's going to give you, again... These are three and a half, so it's seven kilowatts combined power right now. Seven kilowatts times three and a half, that's 21 miles. So, I mean, even on a bad case, me doing 55 or 60, I could go 21 miles additional in the car based on those two batteries. Now, something else. I know what you're going to say. It's taking too long. It takes too long to charge. I have a 30 amp plug. I'm just not using it. The reason, I don't want to use it. If I have to use these right now and it's in a grid down, I'm going to use the least amount of power pole possible to ensure the machines can handle it for the longest amount of time possible without overheating. Obviously, if I switch to the 30 amp, it's going to dump that power, I mean, my uh, tremendously faster, and it's going to fill the car up tremendously faster, but that doesn't mean it's going to let the equipment have the longevity. Okay, so what do we got here? All right. A lot going on. Um, the grounding situation. Let's talk about that. I'm using the EcoFlow provided grounding. So you, you cannot charge off these things, guys. I can't stress this enough. An electric vehicle if you're not grounded. Now, there are grounding plugs. Quite a few of them. They probably work great. I'm going to go on what the manufacturer recommends just to be on the safe side here because there's a horror stories on doing this wrong. So, grounding adapter, which is this little box, plugged into the 110 volt charge cord, which is also plugged right back into the machine. The grounding adapter itself is also 
uh, USB-C to the left side USB-C, and there's an Ethernet, enable, uh, Ethernet cable plugged in here, which also plugs in right there. Whatever the hell the, uh, it, it all does when it's all plugged in, it grounds it out, and then it allows for immediately dumping power. And again, we're only, uh, we're only pulling one kilowatt, but who cares? Like, again, this is for emergency. This is not to charge your car. We're pulling power. One kilowatt, 12 amps, 119 volts. That's pretty damn cool. I'm by no means a solar expert. I'm by no means an expert on any of this shit, and I barely even know what I'm talking about. But I do have solar. So I have real deal solar. Uh, some damn emergency truck coming up here. Drop some shit off. Hold on. So I do understand solar. I understand energy consumption. I understand batteries. We've had four Teslas, Mercedes EQS, Rivian R12. Had a little, another Model Y that we have right here. So I understand uh, probably more about electric vehicles and solar than most, but I ain't no expert. I don't pretend to be. It's one of our storage rooms, guys. Look at all these batteries. Two batteries, four batteries, six battery, eight batteries. These are both battery walls that are double stacked. So I'm just showing you this to show I do understand battery storage. I do understand solar. I do understand electric vehicles and I do understand off-grid survival. It's kind of what I do and I really enjoy it. So not only do we have this solar system here, we also have another solar system there. That's grid tied, grid tied only. This massive system is grid tied, but battery house first. Grid comes in tertiary on its priorities. So again, the only reason I'm going over all that is to simply say what I'm showing you with this Tesla Model X is it's not like I'm like, hey guys, I'm living in the city in the concrete jungle and this is my vehicle and I'm going to charge off solar. That's never going to happen, okay? The odds are you'll be dead as soon as the grid goes down because you have no ability to produce your own food or hunt or anything else. I live in the middle of nowhere on the side of a mountain. And yes, I drive electric vehicles because I don't like Uncle Sam being able to control when, how, how much fuel, when I can get it, when I can go. The price is $3, the price is $7, the gas pump is shut off. Everybody that shits on electric vehicles but drives a big diesel truck or a big twin turbo Raptor or something like that, again, I have them. I love them. But don't think for a second that that's better than a Tesla because it's not. Because when the grid goes down, your truck turns off hard stop. So obviously, I would say, you know, the Ford Lightning, the Cybertruck, the Rivian R1T, the Rivian R1S, those are all better at off-road than a Tesla Model X. Hard stop on that for a second, though. Tesla Model X, when it's up, it has almost nine inches of ground clearance. So this right now in its high setting, nine inches of ground clearance. And of course, you're like, that's not that much. Oh, that's more than a Jeep Rubicon. It's totally flat underneath. There's no differentials, no pumpkins, no nothing hanging down, right? Totally flat. So with basic kind of performance, kind of uh, all season tires, these are the Michelin, I think Pilot 4S. Um, yeah, what are these? Pilot Sport all season 4Ss. So does it do good off-road? As long as you're not rock crawling, then your own limitation is clearance. And when it comes to these Teslas, man, there's not a better all-wheel drive system. I've had this thing in precarious situations. Is it a rock crawler? Obviously not. You'll bang it up. Is it designed for deep-ass mud? Obviously not. That's not the purpose of it. But can it get you through like sand, mud, snow at a pretty deep level very reliably? I would say better than a Jeep Wrangler five out of ten times. And if real clearance or real rocks are an issue, obviously the Jeep is going to be better. But these things are surprisingly good off-road. Surprisingly good. And no matter how you cut it, this is still the fastest SUV in the history of the world. Tesla Model X Plaid, fastest SUV in the history of the world, right? So like, it's not like you can't take this out and beat every single production Lamborghini, every single production Ferrari to include the SF90, every single production Porsche to include a 911 Twin Turbo. Don't even talk about the Taycan, it's not even a sleek. And this is for the SUV. Like, it's nuts. So again, uh, for all my guys saying they hate electric vehicles, this has over a thousand horsepower, over a thousand foot pounds of torque, fastest SUV in the history of the world. It'll beat damn near anything on the road, nine inches of ground clearance, or you can obviously slam it in performance mode, put about an inch off the ground. But we have the ability to take this car and charge it totally off solar panels, hooked up to a solar generator, battery storage, hooked up to the Tesla and be fully off grid, off Uncle Sam's titty and just taking care of herself. All right, so check this out, guys. We are taking uh, input, 770 uh, watts output, 1427. That's actually pretty good, guys. We're basically 
I, I, I mean, think about that. If we weren't hooked up to solar right now, we're taking in almost 800 watts of solar. We're kicking out 1,400 watts. But that's an enormous, enormous amount of extra power going in. I, I mean, it's just awesome. Like, that is truly, truly awesome. So the overall goal for this Model X, guys, we're going to ultimately gut the back of this. I'm getting these uh, two seats out of here. I hate them. Tesla, this is the dumbest thing on the planet. Um, I don't care if it's a performance car or not. To have seats that you can't move, can't fold down, they're fixed in place. Yes, you have seat adjustments. They can incline, whatever. But that's it. It takes up way too much room. So we're going to have these seats pulled out. I'm going to do a flat uh, platform in the back so that basically, and I'm also taking out the uh, seats that are back here. So that when you're in the rear of the vehicle, which is here, the Tesla Model X is actually a very large vehicle on the inside, and it's very good for storage, but it's just kind of weird the way it's set up. So if we get rid of those middle seats, rid of the back seats, I could have such a big, like literally a, just a carnivorous vehicle, carnivorous, Jesus, just large, um, large, large vehicle. But once we get the seats out and this thing all really shaped up, how easy would it be to have two or even four of these in a the car? Two of these, I mean, it's pretty heavy, about 200 pounds, but it's not like having one passenger. So I get rid of all the seats. That's going to be a lot of weight. Put the battery backups in there. Think about on a road trip, right? If you stop somewhere without a charging ability, all you would do is crack the window, put the charging cord through the window, and you could literally be dumping like seven kilowatts. I mean, 20 miles. So like if you just have to go a little bit, you just pull up to a restaurant Get something to eat, plug yourself in. Obviously, if there was a charger there, you would use a charger. But if there's not, this is just an ability. Let's say you're on a crazy long road trip to somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I mean, having three of these batteries in there would literally give you almost 40 miles of additional range in the case of an emergency. So is it a perfect solution? No. Is it a solution? Absolutely. In the case of an emergency, could it be something that could dramatically help you in a real, true grid down situation? The answer is obviously yes. Obviously, the next question should be, what about an EMP and how would an EMP affect everything? I don't know the answer to that and nobody else does either. There's so much conflicting information on what an EMP will or will not do. So uh, my recommendation for that, get a couple batteries like this, keep them in Faraday bags just in case. But again, who the hell knows? And where they are in your house, if an EMP goes, there, there's so many variables to all that. So anyway, that's it right now, guys. EcoFlow Pro solar generator with a grounding kit, rocking on solar. This is in uh, December 31st, Christmas Eve, December 3rd. I don't know what the hell the day is, but it's Christmas Eve, guys. In the middle of winter, the sun is setting. The sun's way back there behind the clouds, coming through behind the trees. Where are we at? Where are we at? Boom, it's up there. So the sun's already heading west. It's already about to set here in a couple hours. We're still making power. We're still pulling real good solar, is my guess. Let's take a look here. 820 watts coming off an 800 watt solar panel you can't beat that man you can't beat that you cannot beat that 800 watts coming off an 800 watt solar panel so smoking sun in december with low sun at that love to see it in conclusion guys can you off-grid charge a ecoflow pro 2 solar generator with the in with the intent of charging your electric vehicle obviously it'll charge a tesla it'll charge any other electric vehicle as well the answer is yes. Clearly, seeing is believing. Solar panel, in the battery, in the car, running perfectly. Car acknowledged, no trips, no faults, no grounding issues whatsoever. Really impressed, really happy. This will be added to my travel kit. So anytime now that I'm traveling, I have a whole travel kit for my EVs. If I'm going, I have a trip to Michigan um, in two days, uh, two days, two days, two days, three days from now. I have a trip to Michigan in three days. I'll document that with this Model X. We're going to have the batteries in there as a backup just in case. We're going to have snow chains and all kinds of shit because we got to go way up north of the uh, Great Lakes. So anyway, Ridgeside K9.